So the edges to me feel like they're too observed and, and maybe you could balance that with a bit more design. So if I look specifically, let's say the, the upper arm, so we're gonna take this and blow it up to the side. So the idea of the form intersections that we talked about in the early part of this, this video and lecture was, I have that at a primary or let's say originary volume of the arm and then I'm, I've worked to stack on top of it other things. So like this would be my deltoid and then you know, under that would be a tricep and we kind of looked at the arm on the last one too. So it's you know, how are all these combined volumes sitting on top. So this is where I don't see the rendering as successful as I think it could be. Even though it's, it's really nicely done, I think the next step would be when I'm looking at these edges, right, so it's, it's, you're doing a really good job of just looking at what's there, but it might be also helpful to know what's there and tend to have some kind of intellectual construct about how it's working. So for example, this is a ball. So the core shadow in the design of the shape is just a wrapping line. Right, and that wrapping line will, sh will change or shift relative to that form depending on where the light is. So what do I do with um, spheres? The spheres always have soft edges like we discussed. So that is going to gradate as smoothly as possible without any transition or break into my light side. And the effect is one of, you know, you're, you're pulling the viewer's eye across this in a very slow way. So there should be no differentiation between the way, in other words, you think of your sculptural form and then your value. They should be mutually complementary. And then maybe let's say there's like a little cast shadow off that deltoid onto the tricep. And then the tricep creates a form shadow, which is also a ball. And this is kind of what I'm losing, is the design of this, the secondary form in terms of the, the wrapping line of that core shadow. And then I would see it starts to kind of taper off into the tendon here and, and maybe identifies more of a box. So we could say this is sphere, maybe tricep in this view is cylinder, and then that's box. Right, so I'm always just setting up that edge and then timing it, and then I'll just fill in with one value, which I usually like to keep lighter than the core shadow. I mean, it depends, of course, on the light source and, and the environment or the, the mood of what you're setting up, but I always like to keep it a little bit light just so it feels like there's some bounce light. Um, and then, like we said, this could be the deltoid would at the medial head connect at the acromion, at the distal head, that's going to connect back to the spine of the scapula. So that's what's giving you this sharper line, and then that creates the cast shadow over and on top of the rotator cuff. So that'd be like infraspinatus, teres minor. But this design, so the, the breakdown of light and shadow shape design is, in my opinion, dependent on how well you understand the composite form intersections of the anatomy. So that's something that like, I could pick up in areas where it looks flat to me. I think the hair also looks flat to me. I think this should be understood. You know, what, how could we speak this as a volume? And because it kind of turned there, it feels like it's too quickly made into texture. And as a result, the texture feels like it doesn't have uh, a, a supporting mass. So I would say like maybe over here, this could be, this could be some kind of, let's make it planar just for fun. Like that would be, it could be a sphere, but you know, it's easy for me to see a crest light and then this in shadow. And then half tone only takes place, uh, or I'm sorry, texture only takes place in the half tone. So I'd want to understand and establish where my forms are, and then I'll just suggest some half tone. Like look at the head here, you know, the ball of the head. The half tone of the head in this would be, let's say that the light shadow is, is right here. This would be the half tone. That's where I'd move these lines of the, the hair in its direction and or texture. That, that's the only place I'm gonna see texture. So I think this area for me gets confusing and that as, an, uh, as a result it flattens. You have some really beautiful half tone on the back here, but what I do lose, let's say, is like what is the, you know, I wanna know how is the rib cage lit? Like I would light this first then kind of develop the half tone up or I mean the other thing that I find to be a little bit confusing or could be considered in terms of design and this one might be you know I it's common in painting that you only render the lights or the shadows 
So halftone only would be developed um, in light or a dark halftone in shadow. And that keeps a consistent focal point. So here it looks like you're developing focal points here and then also a little bit in the shadow too, just based on what's in the hair. So I think there's a, in terms of the composition, I think you need to, to establish a focal point. And then from there, first consider edge fall off. So if that's my focal point, the idea that as I move farther away from that, my edges are gonna get disconnected from form in a way that relies more on atmosphere and peripheral vision. So the edges would be blurrier even more lost or softened as we move away from the crisp area. Just so that'd be like the same principle in film of um, like depth of field. So that would really help in terms of how you're organizing your edges. It would probably mean you could do a little less work too, right? So shadows or lights. And then same thing for the, the pelvis. And I think this, like how do we understand this first and foremost as, as a, a lit form? Like what is the ball doing in terms of the overall design? Uh, down here, I think this is pretty good, like the legs. Uh, but I do think you could you could have a, a broader range in your edges. And that's, again, a response to form. So if I understand that the gluteus maximus is designed, let's say, like a butterfly, and that's my you know, secondary assessment of anatomy as form intersection, then I know that this is an egg that pulls this way, again, halfway down the leg. So we don't want to get that to go too high again. Medius would be out here and it gets that little bump from the great trochanter of the femur. Now I have a better idea of how to design my core shadow break. So if that's the soft edge, I, this one to me looks kind of like goes this way and I'm just defining that wrapping line of the core shadow. This one, I think it's too vertical. And that's, you know, again, in figures, I always try to avoid a vertical or horizontal in favor of a diagonal. So I see that dropping more. So I'm gonna exaggerate that. And then this would be, a, again, soft edge. So super gradated. So I don't want any of that perceptual break between the light and the shadow in that role. Cast shadow is here, of course. So you get that on top of the adductor, hamstring, and that creates that, that cool looking shape there. And then I like this. I think that's like nice how the hamstring gets realized as that ball. It has a nice, let's say, wrapping line for the design of the core shadow across that. I think I would soften it more. So I think your edges are all kind of on too similar, uh, let's say a scale or a, a language for how they're being depicted could vary that that register and then again let's let's soften this like we don't figures don't have a a rigid dark line that exists and that's because there's objects are passing one in front of the other like we have here or atmosphere and edge are coming in in front of the figure sartorius could be we could design this as like a little ball in here and that would give us the read of how that kind of soft edge breaks down at the bottom. But then as I scale for, you know, my focal point, let's say being up there, I'm trying to manage or put everything to be a bit more softened as I get away. It's just a matter of trying to not draw attention. And then here's the, kind of the wrapping of the calf. That looks nice, but I would, I would try to fuzz it even more with soft edges or even into lost edges there. And even you could adjust, and one thing that could help if you don't want to pay too much attention to edges is just adjusting for the local value, right? As let's say the leg gets further away from the light source, then all of that's going to drop down a value. And so again, not, not a, intended to be a design or, or lesson on light and shadow, but I do want to at least try to connect how the big volumes that I'm setting up relate to and allow for, you know, maybe an, an easier way or an easier time uh, and hopefully something that might even you know, like lend nicely toward being able to invent, like how nice to not have to use a reference, have a model, pay a model, set up a light source, you know, that's cumbersome time-consuming. So 
so then on this side same thing so just really just thinking about the the whole idea of the leg as a series of volumes so butterfly egg knee could be a box lower leg a ball that ball is facing the light source so it gets much lighter I think it might be worthwhile just to drop all of that into shadow and move that forward could bring back a little bit of light over here that got kind of too dark in the drop of that form intersect or the um, discussion of local value and the dissipation of light yeah and so again now if I have most of my my lower legs summarized or my legs summarized and made simple then the detail that's in the back to me makes more sense because now I've kind of set up a framing for this area that allows it to be a focal point um, and then the like the the distribution of muscle on top I think is, is fine right but I'm, I'm mostly working with edge so the edge of the trapezius the border of that trapezius and what that means to me is, you know, thinking again of form, edge is the same as plane change. So what this is telling me is that this is on top, there's a stair step, and then we go back onto the rib cage. So I would encourage you to try to think about it as much as you can in that way, because this part, I would say, looks messy, or that looks like it could be better organized. So, you know, if the the fat and the muscle is pinching there because of the movement of the rib cage. Every time I'm making an edge, I'm telling you about the turn or the compression or the herniation of a form. Maybe like into this one, that's also a cylinder. So I'm just designing in light and shadow the same thing I'm designing with line. We're trying to understand with line the sweep of a form and its movement around and across and then in front. Or something like that or this is the trough of the spine so in this area you know, it's going down so uh, again I'm not I'm, I wouldn't say that I'm trying to advocate for one school of drawing or another I understand you know light shadow versus line can sometimes be like a a waste of time in terms of uh, a waste of time that so many people do what's better what's you know more useful they have to inform each other like they they don't think they should never be two, you know biased weird antagonistic groups they have to be thought mutually so like the trapezius here is a cylinder and that allows me to understand like this tone this area of tone to me is unclear for how you're describing the way that lights hitting the top of that roll of the trap ending then back and onto the top of the trapezius as it tails down into the 12th thoracic vertebrae, although it can go as high as the fourth. And so th those would be issues of form, intersections, volume, perspective, that can really help push, clarify, and quicken the, the, the light and shadow study. So really nice on this one, just things, you know, food for thought. Lesson is part of a figure construction course I just released on Coco.com. The course goes through the basics of drawing lines and primitive shapes to using shapes to build complex anatomy and full figures. The course has five hours of lectures, demonstrations, assignments, and student critique videos. The course is currently set as a pre-sale. During that time, it's going to be 20% off. Um, pre-sale ends February 8th, and the course will be available in full then. Check out the link in the description for more info. Thanks.